thank you, Lord, for this new day. We honor you and glorify you for this precious gift. In Jesus' name, amen. We are now winding up chapter number four of Romans. So we start from verse 18 downwards. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as they had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Salah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. And that brings us to the a topic of today's lesson, the promise keeper. Indeed, God is a promise keeping God. It took Abraham a lot of time. Actually, uh, if you follow the Genesis, you will realize it's about 25 years from the time he was told to be, he'll be the father of a great nation to the time that he was blessed with his own son, Isaac. So Paul, in conclusion, uh, is found in verse 11 to 12, uh, talking about Abraham as the spiritual father of all believers, both circumcised and uncircumcised. Being a Jew was always a matter of faith rather than circumcision. So Abraham is the father of believing Jews as well as the Gentiles. He then turns to the covenant that God gave to Abraham. He argues that God's promise that uh, Abraham would be heir of the world, you read in Genesis 18 and also 22, uh, and this cannot depend on law keeping for its fulfillment because this would be an impossible thing because the law brings condemnation and wrath. It has no power to produce obedience. As you can read in Galatians 3, a promise which was dependent on such a condition would be worthless. Uh, so Paul's basic point here is that the law and promise are mutually exclusive. He continues in verse 18 to discuss Abraham's hope that God would give him a son. Just as Abraham's trust in God resulted in righteousness, being credited to him, so also our faith in God will result in righteousness being credited to us. The content of our faith, brethren, may be different. For Abraham, it was faith in God's promise to give him a son, while for us, it is faith in God's promise to, for, to give forgiveness and eternal life through Christ Jesus. Have a great weekend.